Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Excel to create a frequency distribution table, as shown here, where I have data that is counted into what are known as bins. More on this later. And I will also show you how to plot this data to create a frequency histogram, as shown here. So let's get to it. To start with, I just have my example data entered into Excel. This data is height measurements in inches from a group of students. Each cell in the column represents a different student height. The first thing I need to do when creating a frequency distribution table is to decide on my bin limits. So what do I mean by a bin? You can think of bins as a means of splitting up the counts of your data into smaller chunks. For example, say we had the following three bin limits, 0, 5, and 10. The first bin of 0 will contain the numbers of scores less than or equal to 0. The bin of 5 will contain the number of scores with a value between 0 and 5. And the bin of 10 will contain the number of scores with a value between 5 and 10. Now let's say we have some data. Let's make this easy and say the data are numbers 3, 4 and 6. The data value of 3 is between 0 and 5. And so this will go in the bin labeled 5. The same can be said for the data value of 4. So that bin now contains two counts of data. The data value of 6 will go into the third bin since it is between the values 5 and 10. So this bin has a count of 1. So now you know what a bin is, let's jump back into Excel. For this data, I will use bins that range from 64 to 72 inches and are 0.5 inches wide. I will now enter my bin limits. In the first cell, I will enter the value 64. In the cell below this, I will enter equals. I will click on the cell containing the value 64 plus 0 0.5. Then I will click and drag this formula down until I reach 72. The great thing is that Excel will then complete this series for me. To generate the frequency table, in other words, calculate the number of counts in each bin, we are going to use the frequency formula. Highlight all of the cells next to the bins and enter the following equals frequency open bracket click and drag on the cells containing the data add a comma then click and drag on the cells containing the bins and close the bracket. It's important that you do not press enter at this stage. Instead, since we need to enter this as an array formula, we need to press the control, shift and enter buttons at the same time. You will notice that by doing so, the formula is inside curly brackets. This means it is an array formula. Let's now quickly look over the frequency table. In the bin 64, there is a count of one. This means that there is a single student whose height is less than or equal to 64 inches in my data set. In the next bin, 64.5, there is also a count of one. This means that there is a single student whose height is between 64 and 64.5 inches, and so on and so forth. So that's how you create a frequency table. How about creating a frequency histogram? The frequency histogram is just a visual representation of the frequency table, and it makes things much more easier to visualize. To create the histogram, highlight the frequency data in the table. Then go to Insert and select a 2D bar chart. The resulting bar chart will display different bins on the X axis and the frequency, or the number of counts, in each bin on the Y axis. You actually notice that the X axis currently does not display the correct bin values. So let's correct this. Right click on the graph and choose select data. For the horizontal axis labels, click the edit button, then click on the arrow button. Simply click and drag on the range of cells containing the bin values, then press enter. Click OK and then OK again. Now we have the correct bin value labels on the X axis. As you can see, the frequency histogram makes it so much easier to visualize the frequency data. 
I can see that most students in my data set had a height between 68 and 68.5 inches, since there were 10 students in this bin. The distribution of heights then reduces either side of this bin the further from the centre you go. In fact, it almost resembles a normal distribution with a classic bell-shaped curve. To finish off this graph, I will delete my title by selecting it and pressing delete. I will also add Axes Titles by clicking on the plus button next to the graph and selecting Axes Titles. Alternatively, you can go to Add Chart Element, Axes Titles and select the options there. I will call my X axis Height in inches and I will call my Y axis Frequency. Finally, I will make the bars in the chart slightly thicker. To do this, I will double click on a bar in the chart and I will reduce the gap width to 25%. If you don't want any gap between your bars, then simply change this value to 0%. And that wraps up this video tutorial. In this tutorial, you have learned how to create a frequency table and frequency histogram by using Microsoft Excel. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.